Hello and welcome to part one of Dev Maths and Statistics Refresher Course Lecture 6. Now the topic of this lecture is simple data analysis in Excel. Now it does start quite simple, um, so please feel very welcome to scan through quickly and see if there is anything that you can learn from this. If you are an advanced user of Excel already, um, it could be that this will be too simple for you, but um, you will need to use a lot of Excel on the course at various times, and it's very useful to be familiar with it. Now, the subject I've taken for the first part of this is biosand filters, and this was inspired by a student of mine a few years ago who was he was studying economics, but he went to do a work placement. He was an undergraduate looking at um, the impact of this project, which is been carried on in various countries around the world. It'd be interesting to see if you can tell where these countries are actually. Um, but he was in northern Tanzania and these biosand filters are amazing devices because I'm sure you're familiar with the, the problems of drinking water in some rural communities and what a huge difference it can make if you have drinking water which is like this rather than like this. And very simple technology with locally available um, materials can, can make a big difference both in terms of impact on health but he was also looking at impact on income because these were being set up as income generating projects with a double win hopefully that it brings clean drinking water to the community um, and they do claim just with this, these layers of filtration with locally available ingredients to be able to filter out the various things worms and so on and up to 99 percent of viruses um, which is particularly interesting at present time and he was he was there because the project were quite intrigued as to why some participants in this project had done very well and others really hadn't. Uh, he was trying to work out what made the difference on the impact of the project. So I couldn't use his data because it was all private, but I, bet I, I made a data set based on simulated data based on the kind of data he brought back. So um, the basic idea is that they're provided with inputs at subsidized prices. You, they just need a metal mold with concrete. So they actually make the concrete um, things themselves. You can see in this picture here from a mould. They just need a few plastic fittings, a bit of concrete, and really the rest is available locally. So I've put on the, the weight lift stage just some background data, background information on how that works if you're interested uh, in that. But let's get on to the Excel part now. So this spreadsheet, biosand.xlsx, um, is available on uh, Blackboard and probably Teams as well. And it's based on this project in Tanzania. So what the NGO does, they mostly deal with groups of households. So that's one thing to bear in mind about this data set is units of analysis, which is often a confusing thing when we're working with data. Units of analysis, most of the rows are groups, but some refer to individual households. So here's the data. Okay. So as I say, it's going to start at a very basic level. So please whiz through if it's much too simple for you, which it may well be. But for others, it'll be very useful. This is largely in response to students um, requesting more input on Excel at the early stages. Um, so, starting with the very basics, data in Excel is laid out in a grid of cells. So every cell has got a unique address, like B5, K28, which tells you where in, where in the sheet you are. You'll see through this, I've put some questions with a queue. Every time you see a question, unless it's very obvious, you should pause and just check. You can answer that question, you can do that activity, and then unpause and check because I'll go through the things myself and give answers and so on. So the first one is saying, okay, what do we see in cell K1? What is in cell D51? So K1 is here. So it's saying in div greater than 65. And when you click on the cell, the concepts of the cell come up here as well into this bar, the formula bar. So that's what's in cell K1 and in D51. D51, okay, we have to scroll down. So they can be very long, these things, so we're here. It's just a number, 16. And you might be able to tell what it refers to if you scroll to the top, it refers to fittings. Okay, so the, the number of fittings that household were provided with. And this refers to how many individuals in that group of households are less than 16. They must remember their groups of households. Um, okay, what happens then if you go past column Z so pause and check you understand that. There's limitless rows, well, about a quarter of a million rows, but surely here you run out of numbers 
out of letters. So if you go this way, when you get to Z, it starts getting like A, 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 B, A, C, and it goes on through the alphabet several times. So there's plenty of columns. You can set up Excel so that the columns are numbered instead. It's called row column format. Some people prefer that. Mostly you see the letters. Okay, range of, I mean, so a range of cells is shown like this, like A5 to G5 and C4 to C39. So what's the total of the numbers shown in these ranges? So you should, if you're not sure, pause it, make sure you can answer this. Um, we'll do a more sophisticated version of this. Uh, I'm not sure which letter it's on when we're looking at summation notation. Um, but E2 to E11 um, is 11, 11, 11. You have to add up E2 to E11. So that's going to add up to 10 if you have that. Oh no, it's not 10. 11 is going to if you add those up. I think that's going to come to 11. Um, and A60 to D60. A60 to D60. A means. This, that's A60 to D60 there. So it's uh, if you add them up, that's 60, um, 66, so 682. And H5 to J11 will be a, a rectangle, H5 to J11. It's going to be H5 to J11. H5 to J11. Uh, okay, so I'm, you can add those up if you want to, but I'm not going to add them up. <laughs> Later on, you'll work out how to add these up with Excel. <laughs> but those are the cells we're talking about. So that's this is the range of cells. Okay. Um, okay. Now, this is this is the step I hope even the advanced people don't do this and get confused and they come to my office confused and this is the first thing I do and it often helps. <laughs> Uh, I bet someone will come to me with an office that hasn't done this. Um, during the course, you're going to work with really big data sets. You know, and people just get lost, confused, and the deadline's coming, and they're lost in their data. They don't know what's going on. And it's because they come to my office, and they're on like row 3850. And I say, what does this number mean? And they go, oh, I don't know. And then they're scrolling desperately up here because you can't see what these numbers mean. It's really confusing when you forget which column is which. So a really basic first step is freeze panes, which says here. So it explains how to do this. And my preferred one is to click here um, and go for freeze panes, which is here, like this. And this really helps because now when you, you scroll down to row 8000, there's not that many here, and it fixes the top. Also, because this record thing, this doesn't really have much meaning. It's just the number of the household, the number of the group of households. But then that will also stay there as well. So please just do that as soon as you open it in data set, really just freeze the panes, otherwise you get lost. Um, so hopefully, you can understand these two, what happens when you scroll up and down, so keep them frozen. So, a bit of jargon, um, Excel can hold information in many different ways. The ones you might hear are pivot table and relational database. But the one that you see most often during the course is just a flat database layout, so it's just one single table. So at the top you've got variable names. Okay, so he's, these are the variable names, this tells you what data is in each column, so you've got how many molds the household has, how many complete bags they're supplied with, how many fittings. So each column is a variable, and then each of these rows um, refers to one group of households. So a row has got an entry in each column, showing the values for that row, and the rows are called records. And the variables we have data on are called fields. So here, each record has got a number of different fields or columns. So when you get to Stata, you'll be using fields and um, records all the time. 
for an SPSS and other stat software. So records and fields, you need to know what that means. These two words. Um, before you get into any detailed analysis of data, again, it's best to understand exactly what you're dealing with. Um, so each, each record shows one arrangement with a group of households, sometimes a single household. So you should be able to answer this. How many records are there in total? So just check you can answer that. The first one's just a reference number. How many records are there? Um, so the answer is, the answer is not 96, the answer is 95. So there's 95 records, so 95 groups of households, including the single households, because the top has got the variables. When you get to Stata later on, you'll notice that there is, the first row has got data, it does not have the labels in it. In Stata, the, data, the labels for the data go into this, where the ABCD are here, because it's more designed for sort of hardcore data analysis. Can you work out what data is shown in each of the other fields? So at this point, you should check that you can go along here. What do you think these mean? Tech training, I should explain these as we go along, but see if you can guess them. This is whether or not they had simple, everybody gets some basic technical training, level one, two is some enhanced uh, technical training. Um, F is business training. This was one of the things, actually I shouldn't have said the name, the student was doing was seeing whether, uh, or helping to provide, in fact, himself as part of his work with the placement, the business training people. So not only how do you run the filter physically, but how do you keep records, look at the incoming expenses, outgoing, and so on, and, and decide on purchasing decisions. V, I've completely lost that. That's been... hmm. I think this was something he tried about whether they, they, they charge households to have the for entry to the scheme in, in the sense that would give them an incentive to take part like they want to know if that made a difference. Here's a key bit of information household. So this first row here is a single household, a single household. This is a group of five households. And then here's the individual. So not surprisingly, the group of five households have a whole load more individuals. It's the total individuals in those five households. Then you have some breakdowns in terms of how many people under 16, so young children up to 15. How many individuals are over 65, so you might say that's like retirement age. Um, gender, oh, I need to look this up somewhere. There's three different codes for gender. I think it says in the notes that uh, there's naught and one and two, and one is all women. Um, not all the households are women, but all the heads of households are women. One is mixed, or the, the sorry, the, the, the contact points for the project, which usually is the head of household, not always. So all women, all men, all mixed was the code for those three things. It says in the notes which one's which. Filters is um, how many filters they constructed, uh, made. So they all made at least one. So this is one of the key bits of information that, like, if the, if there's like one household making one filter, it means that just kind of just making a filter themselves. They're not going on to sell it, which is the point of what they're supposed to be doing economically. And this was just a record of within that group of households, how many visits were there to the local dispensary for a range of sort of standard treatments in their previous, I can't remember, six months or previous period. And we're trying to look at whether or not it had any impact in a kind of straightforward health terms. Okay, I think the notes have got descriptions of those, uh, the, the ones we talk about in more detail. Um, okay, I'm not getting too long. Um, Another basic task you want to do sometimes is to sort the data, and there's, there's two methods to sort the data into different orders. First one is, the simplest is, is um, this button here. So just click anywhere inside the fittings field. So just try that and press data and then this. See if you can do that. So I need to click, make sure you can do this. You click anywhere in this field, this column, go to data and hit this button. And that'll just sort it from smallest to largest. So you can see one, one group of households only had three sets of fittings. And it goes all the way up to a group of households had 16 sets of fittings. That's how many fittings they I think they provided with a basic number they could they could buy more. Um, and if you want to put it back into the original order, how would you do that? Well, if you think to yourself, 
that's either you can press undo, but if it gets in a real mess, you can click in this record column here anywhere and press that and it'll put it back in the right order for you. So it's, it's, it's a good reason to have that column even if it's not in the original data set. I always insert that. Um, so you should be able to do this, sort it out in ascending order of individuals, in descending order of filters, and then the original order. So make sure you can do that. So ascending order of individuals would be click in here, press that. So it goes from one from two up to the maximum number. You can see what the maximum number is by putting it in descending order. So oh wow, it's 59 in this group of eight households. Okay, quite a range. Uh, and then in descending order of filters. Filters, 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 filters. Okay, okay, the same number of orders filters made. Yeah, so one group made 27 filters. And then put it back into the original order by clicking in record and there. Okay. So far, so good. Um, okay, a more advanced sort is this one. Uh, this is the last thing I'll do in this uh, first simple video. More advanced sort is click anywhere in the data set and do data sort. And a dialog box should appear. Data, so click on this next to it, and this gives you the more powerful sort. Um, so set the set the column to tech tech training. Okay. So set the column to tech training. Notice that if you can't see record here, tech this is ticked. If that's not ticked, what, watch what happens to this. The grey area is the area it's going to sort. If you untick that, it's going to sort the, these as well. That is almost never a good idea because then these get included in the data and they end up in some crazy position somewhere else. So make sure that's omitted. So if you tell it there are headers, which means like titles, then you can get the titles in here. It makes it much easier to sort. So we're going to sort the tech training. So we're going to sort the households out according to the ones that had different levels of technical training, the basic or the more advanced. We also want to sort it with another variable within that, which is fittings, and that's going to be largest to smallest. So add a level, put in fittings, and then do largest to smallest. Okay. So you can say, you can see that's among the ones that had level one um, technical training. These were. The, the largest number of fittings ordered were 16. And among the people that had, so that's all the level one tech trainings, they went down to three fittings. Similar for the people with level two technical training, 16 fittings all the way down to four. So it seems like there's a similar range of number of fittings ordered, whether or not they had level one or level two technical training at first glance. Um, as we'll see later, you might want to use some more basic statistics to, to analyze that more. But it seems quite similar. Okay. Okay, can you see what's been done? Can you put the data in descending order of gender and then within this in ascending order of filters? So just check you can do that. So descending order of gender and ascending order of filters. So pause it and try it, and I'll just show you. See so what? You can just well, you can use these levels. You can either just delete it, or you can use them and change the numbers. So descending order of gender. Descending, I think. I can't remember something for two seconds. Smallest to large, no. Descending order of gender, ascending order of filters. So then we're looking at the grouping by gender, so looking at the different gender groups. See the people in two, which I think was the mixed. They went from one filter up to 27 filters, okay. They think this is the all men. And they went all the way up to 19 filters and the all women group went up to 14 filters, okay. So you can look, there seems to be a slight gender difference in the number of filters that people are making there. 
Okay, and then to put it back, the final step, put it back into the original order, just clicking record, and you can just use that simple source. Okay, so that's got it started. Um, the next thing we're going to do, if you've got it all back in, in original order, is to go on to how you do simple calculations in Excel. Um, so for now, thanks for watching.